Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Father, for this day. Give us wisdom, give us grace, give us your mind, Lord. You've, you've given us the mind of Christ. Let us access that thinking. Let us enter the realm of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit all day long. Well, beloved, I uh, have a few things on my heart and we'll see what comes out. But Lord, give me your words that I would only speak your words and give us ears to hear in the spirit. And the word that I was uh, meditating on this morning is, what are you thinking? <laughs> okay. And so as believers, what is our job? It's to believe. It's to believe. And that's so hard for the flesh to handle. The flesh wants to do, wants to act, wants to perform, wants to earn. But the spirit is, is in the realm of belief. It's in the realm of faith. In Galatians, Paul says, did you receive the Holy Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing with faith? Did God work many miracles among you by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our job is to sit at the feet of the good teacher, of the good shepherd, and hear his word, and then to believe. Now, as we believe, Paul says we speak, right? We believe, therefore we speak. Speaking is a fruit of believing. And so my first question for you is, what are you thinking? You know, what is in your mind? And what is that causing to come out of your mouth? What is that leading to? And so don't agree with the devil. <laughs> with your words, don't speak out your defeat. Uh, this is a discipline that is very helpful to cultivate. To only speak things that Jesus would say. Well, Jesus would only be optimistic he would only be speaking out hope, speaking out faith, speaking out good things. And so that's your job as a believer, is to meditate on good things, right? The scripture says, set your mind on things above, not on things below, where Christ is seated. Well, let me ask you this, where Christ is seated, what's life like in heaven? Well, there's no poverty. Where Christ is seated, there's no depression. There's no sickness. There's no lack. Uh, where Christ is seated, there is fullness of joy. Pleasures forevermore. Okay, there's abundance in every way. So, if you're called to set your mind on things above, where Christ is seated, in another place in the scriptures in Philippians, Paul says, reiterates this point, what is good, what is lovely, what is pure, what is noble, what is of good report, you know, set your mind on these things. So again, I ask you, what are you thinking? And you know, what, what a good discipline for a morning uh, discipline, you know, and don't make, uh, sometimes I used to make quiet time with the Lord this work. Like I gotta go, I gotta go do my quiet time with the Lord. And I'd want to sound spiritual in front of people like, oh, this morning in my quiet time, <laughs> you know, um, it's not a work. <laughs> it's a grace to spend time with your daddy, to get your thinking in line with heaven. I love Joseph Prince says this thing. He says, your brain, sometimes we need to take our brain out, wash it with the detergent of Jesus's blood and put it back in. And so... That's what the morning is for. There's a, there's a psalm that I just love. It says, cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I put my trust. Then it goes on to say, cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto you. And so that's our, that's our cry in the morning, right? Daddy, help me to hear what? your loving kindness, your loving kindness. 
Help me to hear good things in the morning. Help me to think, help me to meditate on good things, on truth, on your word. Your word is truth. And so that's my challenge for you today. What are you thinking? And take captive those thoughts to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? Well, it means that his obedience is what we stand in, not our obedience. And so this is a, a, a massive weapon in spiritual warfare is to constantly go back to his obedience. We're rooted, we're standing, we're confident, we're grounded in the love of Christ and the work of Christ and the, and the finished work on the cross. So what are you thinking? Well, you ought to be thinking, I'm blessed, I'm favored, things will go well, I'm healthy, I'm getting stronger every day, I'm not getting weaker, I'm not getting more sick, I'm getting more healthy. I am healed, I am prosperous, um, I am joyful, I am filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm filled with the light of the world. You ought to be thinking things that are true about who you are in Christ. And as you think those things, you will speak those things. And so this is the fruit that I uh, want to cultivate in my life. When a bad circumstance comes against me, what do I speak? What, am I, what have I been meditating on for the, for the past several minutes or several hours or several days? Well, it ought to be the truth. And if I have been meditating on the truth, let's say a, uh, a client cancels, a big client, and we were kind of relying on that income to meet our our daily uh, or our, our monthly commitment. Or let's say you have a car problem. You know, uh, last year I remember my brakes broke um, and it was gonna be an $800 auto bill, 700 and some change. And so I have a, you know, this thing happened in my life, a circumstance happened, and what I'm thinking will directly manifest through what I say. And so I've just been meditating on the goodness of the Lord in that situation. I've been meditating on the provision of Jesus. And so it just didn't bother me at all. Oh, well, I don't pay for my life, right? The reality is I don't pay for my life, so why would I be bent out of shape? Why would I be upset about it? The king's got to pay for it. So often people say, oh, you know, yes, Jesus is Savior, but he's also Lord. And what that person typically means is are you serving him enough? Because when they think Lord, they think you need to serve him because he's your master in that way. When, I, when, I want, when you guys hear Lord, what I want you to think is he has to pay for you. He is responsible for you. Because I believe that's what the scripture is more meaning. Lord, he owns you. You're his property. He has to care for you. He has to get you where you're going. He has to direct your steps. He has to pay for your way. He has to keep you healthy and strong. Okay, so when you, when you hear Lord, because he is my Lord, I want you to think about the way it was meant <laughs> in first century Israel uh, to, to call someone Lord. They are your provider. They are your caregiver. They are your everything. They own you. Okay, and sure, there's a be obedience to that, but again, the commandments are not burdensome. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. It is a joy to follow Jesus, not a burden. So that would be my word for today, is what are you thinking? And as you think and as you meditate on the truth of God's word, speak that word. We see this in Jesus in the temptation in the wilderness. He didn't have to perform. He didn't have to act. He only spoke the word. He used his mouth. He, he believed, he had perfect faith, and therefore he spoke. Pray this blesses you guys. Have an awesome, faith-filled day. Grace upon grace in Jesus' name. See you next time. Blessings.